Hello everyone, thank you for joining me once again. I hope you enjoyed my last video. Um, <coughs> excuse me, this week we are going over one of the favorites of my collection. Uh, not necessarily anything that's historically interesting, but something that's you know just plain awesome. Uh, as long as you're into modern firearms. Um, this here is my AR-15. Now... Uh, not going to really go over the AR-15's, you know, development history. Interesting though it may be. I'm uh, going to talk to you specifically about my AR-15, which is the DPMS Oracle. Now, I'm talking to you about this one because this is a really good sort of my first AR. It is, uh, as I like to say, quite literally the best bang for your buck. When I bought this about oof, five years ago, MSRP on this was like 700 and some change, and I think they're even cheaper than that now. Which sounds like a terrible, you know, why would you spend so little on an AR, but aside from the fact that it doesn't come with any, you know, sights, so you gotta, you know, mount an optic or get your own flip-up sights, which by the way, flip-up sights are one of the last things I need to get on this, but I'll go into that in a second. Um, it's a great deal. First of all, uh, just, you know, going over my own specific experience, this is one of the most crisp, clean AR-15 triggers I have ever, you know, used. And, you know, again, I say, you know, you see me touch things, I have checked this, I have cleared this, so I don't want to see any angry comments about that. Of course, it still has the shell deflector and the forward assist. Um, shell deflector is nice, forward assist, you can debate on whether or not it's necessary, but it's still nice to come with it on a budget rifle. Again, dust cover also doesn't come on a lot of budget rifles. Uh, have a uh, M1913 Picatinny rail on the gas block, which is nice. Uh, comes with, and now this isn't fancy, but uh, it does come with a chrome-lined bore, which, again, for the money, you can't beat. So, yeah, it's just... And, you know, I have ran, you know, a fair few amount of rounds through it. Not as many as I would have liked to, but... Never had a single stoppage or feed issue whatsoever. It just keeps chugging, and the squirrel's barely broken in. Um, so, I mean, yeah, it's really, again, if you want a really good My First AR, uh, the DPMS Oracle is the way to go. Now, uh, going to that, with go over its stock features here. Uh, you know, standard selector lever safety. Of course, you know, it just says um, safe and fire because this is semi-auto only. Has birdcage flash hider and compensator. Now, I'm not really sure how well the compensator is actually working. Uh, I'm sure if I were able to fire this thing on full auto, it would make a difference. But on semi-auto, it doesn't really seem necessary or it's just doing that good a job. Um, the stock, this is actually the original stock for it. I was looking at some fancy ones online, because of course, you know, everyone's favorite thing to do is trick out their AR, but actually I really, really like the standard one it comes with. But uh, then, going with that, I'll go into the specific things I've added. As you can see, I've changed out some of the fur furniture on this. So, I uh, have a ProMag ergonomic uh, grip here, which actually has this nice back thing, which... Because on the rifle itself, there's a bit more of a gap here. This, it just fits my hand perfectly. I have a Troy P-Mag. These things are really good for the price, of course. Uh, this rifle comes standard with two uh, stamped steel uh, GI mags, which is nice. Uh, have a, and I know some of you are going to make fun of me here. Uh, tr this is actually a True Glow red dot. Um, True Glow is kind of the budget brand, but this is like their $60 multicolor adjustable brightness model yada yada also comes with these nice little flip up filters here for 60 bucks you can't really argue with it it's not bad at all um, again fairly accurate you know standard screw on clamp uh, then this little bit here I'm not the biggest fan of the AR-15's bolt release it's one of the few things I don't really care for about it so I added this which is the Magpul BAD or battery assist device lever to where instead of you know pressing it with your actually screw I'll just demonstrate right now so bolt locks to the rear 
Normally, you'd put your hand back and press it with your thumb or you'd slap it. Here I can just... So... Uh, also, the st um, I have a, you know, single point uh, sling here with a quick detach. I was going to get the proper ring for this here, but decided, okay, that's 30 bucks, or I can get this little strap for about 5 and the stock already comes standard with a, you know, uh, setup for it, so, all right. Uh, it's a little far back for my taste, but, you know, eventually I get the thing, but, you know, for what it is, it works great. Uh, comes, of course, standard with a regular rear sling mount, so I can just get a rail-mounted front sling, pop it on wherever. Uh, most noticeably, I have a uh, Magpul MOE foregrip. This is the carbine length, because, of course, that's where the gas block is on this. I'm, I'm not going to lie, I mostly got this because it looks cool. But, I mean, honestly, it's really ergonomic, really comfortable in your hand. Um, I like the texturing on it. You can get a good grip on it. It has this nice little to keep your hand from moving too far forward, with, which a full, with a full-length barrel is not a big deal, but you can still, you know, burn yourself on it. Um... I previously had a vertical foregrip on here, but removed it as I found. It's nice for steadying your aim while standing, but in every other instance, if you're not firing on full auto, I haven't really found a use for it, so. Um, yeah, so I'll take it over to the workbench and do a basic strip. Okay, so, you know, basic takedown. Um, for those of you already familiar with this system, you know this thing is a dream to take down and customize, with, you know, exceptions of a few parts, but a uh, nice thing, contrary to the first one you saw, this weapon does not require any tools, at least for its basic takedown. Uh, so, well, first things first, this isn't really takedown, but I'll show you these, uh, optical covers here just slide right off. So if they're getting in the way or annoying you, you can do that. I'm gonna keep them on. For this but I'm just showing that off so and of course the stock if you want to remove it see this is a five point adjustable and if you want to remove it you just pull this comes right out so if you got a new one easy change uh, so first things first the whole thing is connected by these two captive pins so you just pop it up and click. And it's cool because you can keep the front one connected if you just want to open it up, look inside, inspect it. But um, of course, first thing I should have done actually is eject the magazine. Uh, standard 30 round capacity, of course, which is, you know, standard issue for this weapon. Uh, then to remove the upper, you just, eh, sometimes this one's a little stiff when you're doing this. Come on. There we go. Until that clicks, there's your upper receiver. And as you can see, these two are held captive in here. So there's no losing them. Uh, so set that off to the side. Go over the upper briefly, because uh, that's where all the fun stuff is. So the if you're not familiar with this, this is your charging handle. This button here keeps it locked closed. Uh, this, of course, is not reciprocating. So you... And when you pull it, you know that puts your flap open there, your dust cover. Pull it out. There's your bolt and bolt carrier. Bring this down, pull it out. There's your charging handle, really simple piece of metal there. Uh, now, really quickly, to show you how this works, if you're not familiar, this is a kind of sort of direct gas impingement system. Uh, what that means is, if you look at this right here, there's a gas tube. You can see coming through there. That engages with this, and the tube runs from there all the way into this gas block here. Actually, let's see. Yeah, there's the gas tube there. So when the bullet fires, you have all that expanding gas going behind it. Some of that travels up through here and blows the bolt carrier open. Now, of course, uh, this whole thing is the bolt carrier. This is the actual bolt right here. Uh, we'll remove that for you just to show it to you. Now, this part you do kind of need a tool for. Uh, not much. Uh, let's see, what the heck do I even have? Ah. Yeah, not you. There you go. little pick. 
or anything really. It's just this little cotter pin here. Pull that out, which allows you to, now this is uh, what guides the bolt here. Shit. So actually this is the next thing I was gonna do anyway, remove the firing pin, that, co that uh, collar holds the thing in. But what I was about to explain is these uh, locking, these are locking lugs here. As the bolt goes forward, these twist and lock the bolt in its position so it can, so once it's fired, the, even with all the recoil, this won't go back until the bolt carrier goes, then the whole thing moves. Which is, you know, with even intermediate uh, power ammunition, that's one thing you need to do. But anyway, twist this, pull it right out, pull forward, there's your bolt. And of course you have your, you know, extractor and ejector in there, the whole nine yards. So then, I'm not going to actually disassemble this, but I am going to show you some of its features. So here's the uh, bolt release I was showing you there. Now, of course, this is the hammer in the cocked position. So I will release that. Come on, damn it. Okay. So if you see inside here, this has a pretty interesting mechanism. This little hook back here, that's the disconnect. Uh, so let's say the hammer's just struck home, fired off a round, bolt comes back, pushes this back, because of course this is semi-automatic. Uh, the nice thing is there's a little claw that engages the hook. So it will not, so no matter how long you hold down the trigger, it won't reset until you, uh, so. And of course, um, you know, turning this full auto is not as simple as just filing this little thing off as some people would have you believe. It's actually a lot more complicated than that and at best you'll just get a few runaway fires which if anything is not what you want. So. Uh, but yeah, that's basically all there is to it aside from, well, okay, this can be removed but not doing it because the delta ring here is a pain in the butt. It's really heavy and you have to pull it back while prying these apart. Um, just take my word for it that this is just, you know, injection molded um, uh, composite polymer and screwed into the bottom here is a metallic thermal coated um, heat shield. So, I mean, that's about it. Well, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my, you know, sort of overview of this uh, very specific model of AR-15 that I have in my uh, collection. Uh, full disclosure, I actually name all of my rifles, or all of my guns really. The last one's too new, I haven't really come up with a name with her, uh, uh, for her, so... Uh, but uh, this girl's name is Alicia right here, so I'm sure she's happy to meet all of you. But um, yeah, thanks for joining me on Talking Guns with Mike, and I hope to see you next time.